Florida Governor Ron DeSantis standing up to critics over his state banning a new AP African American history class. The Biden White House is blasting the decision. This course it, it is on inc black in incomprehensible that uh, to see that uh, this is what uh, this ban or this block to be more specific uh, that DeSantis has put forward. If you think about the study of black Americans, that is what he wants to block. Uh, and 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 again, these types of actions aren't new. They are not new from from what we're seeing, especially from Florida, sadly. DeSantis hitting back, saying the course would indoctrinate students and has a political agenda. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. And so when you look to see they have stuff about intersectionality, abolishing prisons, that's a political agenda. They're advocating things like abolishing prisons. Now, now that's, a, that's a radical political position. Harold, how do you see all of this? Well, I would have thought that by now that Governor DeSantis, who I think is an important, if probably one of the two or three most important voices in politics over the last two, two to three years, and certainly when you think about COVID, was, was the most dynamic voice for those opposing some of the things that, uh, that the Biden administration and even some of the things that they, he's now opposing what the Trump administration did and some of his questioning about the, the vaccines. But as I listen to him now, it appears that he's a front runner for the presidency on the Republican side. He appears to be winning even against Joe Biden in the election. I would have thought his, he would have pivoted to talking about China, talking about our military, talking about the border, talking about crime nationally. Um, so it, it, it's, it's taken him down a little notch in, in, in my book. Second, about this issue. I, I have young kids. So this, this whole idea around what's happening in schools and we're dealing with this conversation at our school around when kids should be taught certain things. And I, I, I'm not totally persuaded yet that we should be talking to kids at such an early age about uh, gender and sexuality the way some of the schools want to talk about. But as I looked into this thing that, that what, what he's talking about, uh, uh, DeSantis, he's talking about authors like James Baldwin and Zora Neale Hurston and Toni Morrison who make up some of the most important writers in the 20th century American canon. Now, if you want to quarrel with the American canon and go back to Edgar Allan Poe and Herman Melville, both who died under suspicious circumstances, some they said they were, they were it was suicide or substance abuse or, or alcoholism. We, we, I wouldn't say reading Edgar Allan Poe means that you want to be an alcoholic or you're trying to push substance abuse on kids. My only message to him is get serious. This, this, this is not going to change the outcomes of, of student outcome performance in your states. You were 34th in 2018 and 2019, and you're no higher today. And it's not because you're teaching black American studies or African American studies. It's because kids aren't learning science. They're not learning, learning math. They're not learning English. I would agree with you. Some of the things you talked about, the intersectionality thing, you yeah. got to figure that out. But at the end of the day, student performance is the most important thing. And if it means teaching them something you don't like, Governor, and they learn more, then do it. Okay. So he's being, DeSantis is being viciously attacked on this particular issue. No one's talking, uh, and we should talk about this issue. I want you to, Greg. But the other thing he is doing is he just uh, had a big raise for teacher propo teachers proposed, which is, gets directly to student performance. On this issue, I, when I finally read all about it, I'm like, he's not saying <coughs> you can't teach African-American mm -hmm. studies. He's saying this particular course, go back to the drawing board, let's see something else. Yeah, I, and I think that's, I think, Harold, you kind of, you, 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 you did the, a little fine line there. I think you actually were saying the same thing. I is that, yeah, I this, just, but be serious about it. Yeah, it's a black. I mean, I black. As serious. you know, I'm an expert at black history. I've been <laughs> teaching it for uh, decades at uh, the <laughs> University of Gutfeld Studies, at <laughs> Internet <laughs> College. Uh, but uh, I, you know, um, when you kind of get the sense that they're shoehorning like activist type stuff, intersectionality, queer theory, trans act into these things. You got to keep an eye on it, you know, and it's like, you know, and so that what they're doing for, for the average black family, they should be pissed. They'll be like, oh, this isn't right. this isn't African-American history. This is created by some white privileged left wing elite, you know, and maybe a black female Marxist who's their teacher or something. It's like it's like it's not it doesn't reflect 
the the conventional wisdom of most people. I came up with this theory yesterday purely by accident. I call it the straw trans yeah, argument. Good one. Like the straw man <laughs> argument. But it's straw trans in the sense that anytime you bring up a sensible idea, like, look, I don't think there should be invasive permanent surgeries on healthy kids. And I don't think activists should be generating, you know, sex or gender theory for children. That is perceived as transphobic. So that's, that's what I would call a uh, straw trans argument. When in fact, being pro-trans is making sure this stuff doesn't happen. So people are old enough to make the decision so you can respect, respect in, in the whole idea of it and not have to worry about this other stuff, which is basically being pushed by a, a small group of uh, delusional activists. Judge Governor DeSantis knows that uh, he's going to get attacked for decisions that he makes. He seems prepared to respond, uh, but the White House loves to have DeSantis as a foil. They absolutely do. I'm surprised they didn't drag out or he didn't drag himself out, Gavin Newsom, who, who sees mm -hmm. himself as the person to oppose uh, Ron De Governor Ron DeSantis. The, the thing about this is it's, it's almost like this indoctrination is parading around as education. I think we all agree. Uh, DeSantis wants black history black education. Um, and what he said basically was, I don't want to talk about issues like queer theory and intersectionality and abolishing prisons, when the truth is that we just learned two years ago that the African-American community, more than anyone, wants more cops. They want more consequences. Mm -hmm. And we're indoctrinating our kids to say, you know, well, uh, the blacks are against prisons. No, they're not. So, and he's taking on this issue as opposed to other issues, Harold. I think because he's in the thick of it. He got in the thick of it because of yeah. Disney and what they said about the don't say gay law because we saw what happened in Virginia. Uh, and just today, I forget what governor's new governor who now has the money following the students in her state. They just signed a law. Iowa. For, yeah. Iowa in education. So it's a big issue and he's primed for it. Dana, can I just add something yeah, to sure. this real quick? That what we're seeing here is a lot like what we when we covered the story about the American Doll book. And it's like, what is this doing in this book about the American Doll when you go to that store? Why are, why are there chapters on intersectionality? Be your own non-binary person to, to kids. That's all this is about. It's not about African. It's about why is why are these things showing up yeah. in places they shouldn't? Where is the age appropriateness? Jesse's done a deep dive here. I have. Oh, fantastic. Wow. I read the entire syllabus today. You did? It took me about an hour. Okay. <laughs> it was the most prep I've done for weeks. It's a very good course. Mm -hmm. Three quarters of it is very rigorous and very good. And this is very high level stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you get to about 1960 in here, and it's all activism. It's all ideology. It's no history. A good course a chunk of this is really good stuff. And then it goes into white supremacy, patriarchy, uh, abolish the prisons, overthrow capitalism, mm. queer theory, intersectionality. And you're like, whoa, we were going pretty good here. And then boom, it hits you with all that stuff. And I understand why some African-Americans want to take an African-American history class that's taught through the lens of African-Americans. It's not some white guy telling the history of African-Americans. It's a black professor or whatever. That, I understand that. But now, no one's read this. No one's read the syllabus. Jean-Pierre hasn't read it. This is like the don't say gay bill. Now they're saying this is the you don't say black bill in Florida. So it's just being totally mischaracterized. And we're going to have on the director of the Florida Education Department tonight on primetime to discuss it further. And you know what? Jesse Jr. has applied early decision to Gutfeld University. Oh, fantastic. And he's been accepted. You know what? The thing is, there are no favors. I, you know, we he just, just got on in his own merit, right? Bet, yeah, or good. Good, good, good. He had an alias. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.